Hi, Mark Yuffie here, taking a look at menu-driven interfaces in Python. When you can't have a graphical user interface, a menu-driven interface is the next best thing. We're going to do this using a while loop, and although we're not going to uh, do it in this case, sometimes this is where an infinite loop or an endless loop uh, would be used and would make sense, wouldn't be a mistake. All right, let's see what we got. So first thing we need to do is to create a menu and what we're going to do this is uh, borrowed from an example at this website here it's a pretty good explanation of functions but in, in this case we're looking at um, how to do a menu okay so with our menu we want it to look something like this There we go. And how this will display to the user is like this. Oops, we go over here, run the module. And that, that's what it'll look like. And the idea is the user should be able to choose one of these five options. But we have to do more to make that happen. We have to put in a selection. So we'll use choice. And I'll just do a little copy and paste here for my little cheat sheet. There we go. So that's going to give it a choice. And then we're going to go through an if else type thing so that depending on whether choice is a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, we'll do something. So if the user selects one, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll get the first add-in, we'll get the second add-in using input, convert both of them to integers, and then display the result. Then we might also do an else if and in this case we'll want to do subtraction right but I'm going to show you a little shortcut I don't think it's mentioned in the book but this helps cut down on the number of in indentations you have because you know for the third one that's going to have to go over yet another one fourth one yet over another and pretty soon we run out of screen space so there's a little shortcut a combination of else and if called elif and that way we can keep that lined up with the if and uh, it saves on a whole lot of indentation. So for the choice two, that's subtraction. Now we want to take care of that piece of it. So elif or, or else if choice equals two, then we get our first, I forget, one's a subtrahend, I think the other's a, the menu end, I don't remember. But you get the first piece that from which you're going to subtract the second piece from, convert them both to integers, do the math, and display it. And then, well, next up is going to be choice equals three. And for that, we're going to do multiplication. Here's our third choice, multiplication. Very similar in, in structure to what we had before. Oops, except I don't, oh, you see it, cap. Oops, multiply, right? So that's uh, times that. Okay, and then of course we want to do a um, division, and there's a little trick with um, on copy and paste within idle. All right, so we'll do a replay. Uh, we'll do a, a find, uh, except not subtract. We want to find. MUL, replace that with DIV, and then it's find, 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 find. 
one more time. Replace mall with div. There's one, another, another. I don't know why it didn't work the other time. That's the way it goes. It's because I was counting on it to work. There we go. Okay, so we got that, except this is choice four. And then for choice five, it's uh, In that case, it's just uh, we clear our flag, we'll set our loop variable equal to uh, zero, and you say, what loop variable? We don't have a loop here. Well, guess what? This is all that we need to have for our loop. All we do is we take this thing here, highlight this whole thing, tap it in, well, all right. One at a time then. Tab, 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 tab. Now we've, we've completed moving our indentation in. All we have to do, I'm kind of working backwards here, is define the while loop. So we'll set, first we need to have our, what's called the century variable for the, the while loop. We'll call that simply loop. And we'll set that equal to one. All right, and then our while loop will run as long as loop equals one. All right, and it's only in our fifth choice here when we set it to zero. We could even throw in an else just in case the user enters something other than one, two, three, four, or five. Please enter a value from one to five. Okay, and uh, we uh, run this thing, and this should work just fine. Now, who am I kidding? We know it's not going to work, right? Okay, so one addition. Okay, add this. Let's see, uh, two and two, four. Wow, I got I, I got help with my math now. Four is uh, let's take uh, eight and divide that by. Add this, okay, add this uh, four to this four. Ah, look at this, I can't do anything other than add. I knew it wouldn't work. All right, so that's because we come down around here. This needs to go inside of our while loop because otherwise we don't ever change choice. This is all dependent on choice. This is the only place the choice changes, right? There we go. So we move it inside the while loop, have to indent it to make it part of the loop body. A little space just for readability. And then when we run it, come over here, uh, addition. So two and two, and then it says, okay, choose your option. I want division. Uh, div to ply. Okay, we'll div to ply it. That's a good old copy and paste error. And we'll div to ply uh, 8 and uh, 2. There we go. 8 times 2 equals 10. It looks like uh, I left a lot out of there. If I put in 5, there we go. We quit. Okay, just to change it up, I got subtraction right. I got multiplication right, but then I forgot to change division down here. There's our div to ply. And that would be um, oh, that one's right. It's just one that needs to be fixed. So it's slash, suddenly slash here. And then I'm looking up here, the multiply was wrong. And in fact, the subtraction was wrong. I had a lot of wrong things in here, but my menu worked. Isn't that the good thing? All right, so 
one more time let's review so you have to create a menu and very often the menu itself should be repeated every time the loop runs so I'll put that back inside the while loop this would be a good piece to put inside a function just to make the while loop a little cleaner but I'll leave that uh, up to you okay so we have our menu we have our loop with our century variable and our, our loop our century variable is initialized before the loop begins such that we have a, a true condition when we want to exit the loop first of all we have a series of choices that we want to make and we have to get that choice from the user first so we get the choice and that's going to determine which of these if lfs are executed only one of them will be if we enter five then we set our century variable to a value that will cause the loop to exit cause this condition to be false and in this case I put in a little something for the user just in case um, they enter an improper value we want to let them know that that was the case alright so one last time I'll run it this should work just fine I hope I mean how many times can I get this wrong so uh, for division division this oh, okay divide this would be uh, 9 divided by 3 and 3.0 super subtraction 2 uh, 102 minus 4 we get 98 super okay and then we want to exit it we enter 5 and you can see there's a lot of different ways you could set up a menu and it's a pretty handy thing to have so that's one of the very common uses of a while loop I hope you found that helpful.